Welcome to Peter Peer Real Estate Show. I'm your host, Willie Morales. On today's show, I have Jerome Myers. By way of background, he guides apex leaders across industries by first teaching them to focus on creating central lives. As a leadership coach, he guides his mentees to focus on impact and significance so they can be change agents in their homes, communities, and organizations. Jerome Myers, thank you so much for being on Peter Peer Real Estate Show. How are you? Amazing. How are you, sir? Thanks for I having me. I am good. No, it's my pleasure. So, Jerome, I always ask this question of everybody that I have on. Did you know early on that you wanted to be an entrepreneur? Was this something uh, that you grew into or it fell into your lap as you when you were younger? Uh, what, what's your story about that? Yeah. So as a kid, I thought, man, I will be the guy who designs the roads that take you to the buildings and design the buildings too. Like I thought that was the thing, right? Went to college and I was like, man, I need to get my PhD in construction management so I can run a construction company. Mm. And I didn't do any of that, right? <laughs> I, I went into corporate America, went into the power industry. And then I still remember sophomore year in college, sitting on the suit with my buddy Duran and we like to do math because that's what engineering students do. Yeah. And it was, I was paying 395. I had two roommates paying 395 downstairs. Same thing was happening in his apartment. When we multiplied it across the complex, it was $700,000 of top line revenue coming in. Wow. We never saw the person that owned the property. We never talked to him because he had third party property management in place. And I was like, man, I want to do that. And there was an episode maybe six months prior to that where I had a summer job working at a gym and it was Sunday. We closed at five and I shut it down at like 440. Right. It's like, man, I'm just going to go back. And my supervisor came and knocked on the door, said, hey, man, what are you doing? I said, nobody can get a workout in in 15 minutes. He said, we pay you for your time not to think you need to wow. be in place. And it was at that point I realized I want to decouple my time for money. And so that was when I realized I wanted to do it, but I had no idea on how. The how was the tough part. Right. Wow. I mean, so was that incident that uh, whether he was your boss or coworker, and he says that, you know, we, we don't pay you to think. Um, at that moment, that's when you said, this is not going to work for me anymore. Was that, was that a, like an aha moment for you? It was an aha moment. I didn't know it was, this isn't going to work for me, but I knew that I didn't want to be paid for my time. Right. That yeah. part was crystal clear for me at that point. Okay. Um, how was the support uh, early on? Did you get the support that you needed once you made the decision to become an entrepreneur? Anybody try to say, hey, you should stay with a nine to five. It's a steady paycheck. You know, why rock the boat? Yeah. So it's funny. Uh, the I didn't really talk about it in the beginning, but of course I got the age old question. Well, how are you going to pay for insurance? Yeah. Right. Or not how you're going to pay for it, but how are you going to get insurance? I think everybody who is an entrepreneur wants to know how that happens. That's always the and first thing I agree. Me, <laughs> it was a pretty simple answer for me, but you know, that was the biggest concern. The biggest concern is how I'm going to get insurance. Mm -hmm. And so, you know, was there a lot of support? No. You know, I thought my friends were going to be patrons of my business. They didn't end up doing that. And so were there, was there the right support in the end? Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now, what I did learn, though, is you have to go make a whole lot of new friends. If you want people that you know, like, and trust to support you in your new business, because your old folks, your old network knows you as who you are. Right. Right. They've got this track record of you doing the thing, whatever you were formally trained to do. And if you're going to move out into the marketplace and do something different, you're going to have to reintroduce yourself to the people you already know and introduce yourself to the people who you don't know yet. Wow. Good point. Good point. So, you know, our main topic today, it's about habits, right? And so early in your career, how did you discover that habits can be good or bad? You know, um, I don't think a lot of us know uh, how habits can form us on a daily, even a minute by minute basis. So how did you figure that out uh, early on that habits are good or bad? I, I don't. So that's interesting. 
I have to pause on that <laughs> because habits being good or bad, you know, I, I don't know if they're good or bad. I think they just are. That's where I think I really want to answer this question. I, okay. I struggle with it at first, but I think they just are. The habits are either leading you to the life that you want or taking you away. And for some people, they would characterize that as good or bad, but I will just say they're taking you where you want to go. Or they're taking you away from it. And they wow. just are habits or tools, just like money. Mm, wow. That, I never saw, I never thought of it that way. I like that. Um, so what did you do to perform better with your habits? Like what was, you know, what did Jerome do early on in his career or early on as a young man, younger man uh, to form his, his core abilities, his, his, his uh, proactive habits, uh, you know, so to speak. Yeah. 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 I, yeah, my mom, in her infinite wisdom, had me read Seven Habits of Highly Effective People when I was in high school, right? And so That's amazing. <laughs> my favorite one, a lot of people don't like this one, but it's my favorite one, is that continuous improvement thing, mm -hmm. right? And so how are you sharpening that saw? And so on a daily basis, I do something in order to improve my skills. Now, it's not the same skill every day, but we are absolutely working to become better as an individual and a contributor so that we don't put get ourselves in a position where we hit our lid, right? I think every organization is capped by the capacity of the leadership. And so my goal is always to make sure that I'm not the reason that the organization doesn't continue to grow. Oh, okay. I, I like that. You know, um, when it comes to, let's say like real estate, like my business, um, I always try to maintain a, a set of core habits every day, check out markets and stuff like that. But then I'm going to be honest with you, then I start a little bit of procrastinating. Uh, then I say, you know what, I'll do it tomorrow. And, you know, that's a habit that is definitely not productive. So in your opinion, uh, what we do in the morning, can that set the stage uh, for the rest of the day, whether it's good or bad habits. Um, in other words, um, whether it's our mind, it's whether we are focused on, on getting things done or getting uh, our goals, you know, at the finish line, does our morning, morning routine, does that play a, a huge part in our uh, overall day? I believe it does. I, I think how you start the day has a huge impact on your ability to get momentum. Some people rush out and they feel like they're behind. They're trying to catch up. They're flustered. And I think when you're in that state, it's very difficult for you to be creative and proactively problem solve. I think you just spend your time in a reactive space. And I, the people who I know that perform at the highest levels are usually ahead of the game. They are prepared when situations come up and that allows them to respond instead of react. And that response is usually well thought out and leads to an outcome that they desire versus something that just happens out of circumstance or happenstance. Wow. Um, can you explain a little bit more about that? Like, what is it that we might do that we could do, if it's possible, do differently? Again, does it come to our mindset? Is that something that we need more to focus on to, to have that positive, uh, you know, that positive attitude? The mindset is always going to drive how you interpret what's going on in your life, right? Mm -hmm. So every action is neither good nor bad. We just know that it happened. It's kind of the statement of fact. It is the thing. And right. then from there, we get to assign a story to it. And so our mindset determines whether or not we believe that the thing happened to us or it happened for us. If the thing happened to us, then we immediately go into victim mode and we're looking for somebody else to solve that problem for us. When we feel like it happened for us, then we will either go into the guide space or the hero space. Either way, we're okay. Mm -hmm. Either way, we're okay. And so in the hero or the guide space, we're empowered. We feel like we can guide, we feel like we're in control. And with all of those things said, it puts us or pushes us to a new uh, position, one that furthers us, one that moves us closer to our purpose or mission. Nice. Uh, I, I love that about the, 
having the purpose or the mission of our day or our goals or just the outcome of whether it's a day, a week, or a year. Um, I think that's so important. So um, if you can, what are some steps that we can do to change our, our, I hate to say bad habits because any, you know, a habit is a habit, but are there any suggestions that you could offer uh, to my listeners and your listeners, like what we could do to at least uh, get ourselves going in the morning? Yeah, I think the first thing is answer the question on, am I on purpose? Right? Am I moving and acting on purpose? If you're just going through the motions, if you're just going to do something because it pays well, it's highly likely that you're not going to be motivated to do things expediently or even at a level of excellence. And I mean, I think that's the baseline, understanding the why, getting super clear on your why will then guide your habits because you want your habits to be in alignment with you actually being able to achieve that purpose or mission. The why, I think that's the biggest, it's like an if, you know, the why is to me is next in terms of powerful words. What, what, what is it you want to accomplish and why? I think a lot of people don't get to, to, to use that word why, why am I doing this? Um, for you, Jerome, when you discovered your purpose, of, of becoming a speaker, you know, being in real estate, uh, just, you know, uh, doing your podcast, you found your why. Am I, am I correct that, you know, you wanted to help percent. people. Yeah. So can you talk a little bit more about that? Yeah. I mean, for me, I just got tired of seeing people suffer. Right. And I, I wanted to end people who were suffering because they were living mediocre lives. Mm -hmm. I think most of us live in a space where we know whether or not we're doing what we're supposed to be doing. We know whether or not we feel like our life has meaning. And if it does not, then I think the majority of us feel pretty sad about that. And so it's my ambition to help people figure out how to find their purpose and then from there walk in it and actually execute the mission that they were placed here to be. And, you know, we do that through a variety of different experiences and techniques. But at the end of the day, that level of clarity, I think, is the game changer that most people are looking for in order to go to that next level. Nice. That's when you can be best in the world at something. Right. Um, for you, when you started your business, if you had to do it all over again, what would you have done differently? Uh, when you started your, you know, your speaking engagements, uh, being, you know, helping people would anything would have been done differently once you got your career going and helping people, anything you would have uh, changed at the beginning? Absolutely. I would have started earlier. I put it off and said, oh, well, I, I need to do this and I need to do that. And then I, I think about somebody who went off and started their business while they were in college and what that allowed them to do from building a wealth and a system perspective where they actually own a business that doesn't require much of their time that sends them money each month and we're similar in age and then that allowed them to move to the next thing and not have to worry about the income. When you have a job and you stop working that job, mm -hmm. your income stops. Very true. And so, those people who are smart enough to start a business early on and then figure out how to systematize that business and work themselves out of the business so that the business will send them money versus them having to change their time for money. I think they put themselves in a great position to be able to explore other things and as well as have some freedom, mm -hmm. which I think most people are pursuing. I, I, I think um like for me just having um like going back we're talking with jerome myers uh the two biggest things that i got from this uh, interview so far is being on purpose and your why i really think that is so important um uh for our daily habits our daily goals just to become a better man that you were yesterday and the day before and i think to me those two are so huge being on purpose and having your why you know, um, I also think being self-reliant, I think sometimes we might rely on friends or whatever, but you know this, Jerome, 
people say that you're the average of the five people you hang out with. Um, so I try to, uh, I, you know, I didn't get rid of those friends, but I got myself more distant from them. Um, did you find that going on in your career as you got older, um, that you had to put some of your friends in the, I hate to say back burner, but uh, let's say on the other side of success, if my question made any sense at all. Yeah, your question made sense. And I think you were trying to be gentle, but I won't. So I, uh, You're the I speaker. Ended <laughs> yeah, I ended relationships with friends because exactly. they were not in alignment with where I was intending to go. Mm -hmm. When those relationships were no longer on purpose, right or wrong, I made a decision that I could no longer invest in them. And I think the majority of people will have to make a tough decision like that. And I liken it to a rocking ship. Everybody's not able to go to that next level with you. The door is too narrow and you're going to have to shed some weight. And that's okay because when you get into orbit, you're going to find other people who are playing a different game and folks that you will enjoy spending time with. I think a lot of times we fear not being able to be ourselves with new people. We've got to put this mask on or that mask on. But the reality of the situation is when you are continuously working to become your best self, you don't have to wear a mask and you can show up transparent and authentic. And in that, you will create a space, an opportunity for people, new people to be attracted to you. No, I love that. I, I just love the, the fact that, listen, you were bold enough to say, yes, I was trying to be <laughs> to Jerome, you caught me. Um, I think, you know, I, I didn't want to get rid of those friends, but I did put them on the back burner. Um, so for you, um, tell us more about your podcast. And if I read right, do you have two podcasts that you um, currently yes, do? Or, yeah. So talk more about them. Yeah. So two podcasts, the Dreamcatchers podcast tells the stories of people who've exited the matrix. And the whole goal there is to help the listeners get some inspiration, education, and direction as they go out on the dream or the pursuit of making their dreams a reality. Mm -hmm. And then Multifamily Missteps was a podcast that we created because we were tired of all of the HGTV style uh, podcasts where people just come on and tell you how great they are and they don't ever make any mistakes. And so we collect the war stories from operators around the country so that one operator can learn from another. And it's my ambition to raise the overall operational knowledge of the operator base. Yeah, I, Jerome, I was definitely guilty. I think early on when I started my real estate uh, investing career, I think it was 2007, eight. it took me a few years to decide what I want to do. But I, I have to admit that the first couple of years, it was HDTV. I couldn't wait to get out of work. I couldn't, uh, I would record these shows and I'm like, oh my God, they make, but yeah, they don't tell you the whole story. You know, they just tell you how much is the profit, but they don't tell you who gets paid and how was the delay and all that. So yes, I, I tell you one thing, I was definitely guilty of HDTV. Um, so what's next for you, uh, Jerome? What are you looking to do in the next three to six months? And if you could talk about any of your speed, uh, speaking engagement that you have coming up. Yeah, I mean, the next three to six months, we're doubling down and really diving deeper on coaching and masterminds. And so mm -hmm. our powwow at the Mountaintop Mastermind is going to kick off in the second quarter of 2022. Mm -hmm. That'll be a quarterly meeting of 15 to 20 people who are looking to grow and are looking for that tribe, that wolf pack that will help them go to the next level. The goal there is to put a collection of people together who can eliminate friction with a phone call or two. And that friction can be anything. It can be in your personal life. It can be in your business. But we want you to be surrounded by folks who you can actually count on. Because I think a lot of us find that we've got those friends who say they got our back and they're willing to do this and that for us. And then when we finally do make the call, they're too busy or unable to fulfill the request. So there's that, and we're super excited about that. And no, then, congratulations. And so you're looking to start this uh, probably at, at late spring, early summer? Yeah, so the first uh, in-person me meeting is going to be the weekend of June 3rd and 4th. Okay, sounds good. Well, congratulations for that. Good luck with that. I'll definitely put that in the show notes. 
And um, first of all, Jerome, thank you so much for being on Peer to Peer Real Estate Show. I really appreciate it. And before I let you go, just a couple more things. What keeps you motivated daily? Um, what's your why going forward now? Um, you, you, you had your why at the beginning, but going forward from, you know, at the time of this recording, what motivates you? Yeah, so we're on a mission to free 100 people from work they're not passionate about. Mm. And every morning I look in the mirror and I've got this decal on it that says, are they free yet? So that's my mission. My mission is to help free 100 people from work they're not passionate about. And that work's not anywhere close to being done. I, I forgot. I don't know if I heard it to st statistics. And tell me if I'm wrong, Jerome, that it was anywhere from 60 to 70 percent of people don't like what they do. Was it that high 80. or was 80. 80? Oh, geez. Gallup. Oh, my Gallup God. survey, 80% of the people who are doing jobs are not passionate about. Oh, uh, uh, yeah, that, uh, <laughs> I, I thought it was um, much lower. So um, any books you would like to recommend? I mean, have you written a book? If I missed it in your bio, I'm sorry, but you have definitely a book or two in you, probably one book a year. <laughs> so any yeah. books you would like to recommend? Yeah, we, we do have a book. We don't talk about it in the bio, but the book is called Your Dream Should Be Real. Mm -hmm. And we just talk some of the most profound lessons that I've learned over the course of my life and distilled it so that people can grab that knowledge and apply it immediately. Um, the fact of the matter is we believe your dream should be real. If you got the right strategy and the right support system, you dramatically increase the likelihood that you're able to achieve that. No, I like that. I definitely, I'll definitely put that in the show notes. And if somebody want to get in contact with you, what's the best way? Yeah, JeromeMyers.co will give them a roadmap to everything that we have going on. And by jumping on there and letting us know what you're most interested in, somebody on the team will get in contact with you and help you navigate that journey. Well, it sounds good. Well, Jerome, again, thank you so much for taking time out of your busy schedule to talk to Peter P Real Estate Show. I really, really appreciate it. Grateful for the opportunity, sir. Thanks for having me. No, my pleasure. Thank you. Well, everyone, that was Jerome Myers, and you can find them at jeromemyers.co. That's jeromemyers.co. Jerome, thank you so much for being on Peter P Real Estate Show. Really appreciate it. You can find me at peer-to-peerrealestate.com. That's peer, the number two, peerrealestate.com. Check out our past shows and check out our blog. Also, when you get a chance, please go to Apple Podcasts. Please subscribe, leave a review, tell us how we can make this show better. And before I go, guys, there's a couple of things. Do not give up on your dreams. Fight for it, guard it, protect it. Don't let anyone talk you out of it. And I really believe if you keep the momentum going, good things will happen. On behalf of Peer to Peer Real Estate, I'm William Morales. Until next time, thanks, everybody. Have a great day, and please stay safe. Bye.